I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be a big one. Today's video will be my top 15 completed fantasy series. Yes, it is time to update this list. The first time I posted this video, it was two years ago. And to this day, it's still my best performing video on the channel with more than 60,000 views. I have mentioned I will keep updating this list every two years, once every two years. And I know that this is January 2023 already, but well, I haven't finished any new series in January. So yeah, this list will consist of the top 15 best completed fantasy series I've read up to the end of the year 2022. Honestly, it was difficult for me to limit this number only to 15. As the passage of time passes, some series just become better in my mind. In fact, the top 6 fantasy series on this list, I'm ranking all of them as my number 1. Yes, I just cannot choose between these 6 series, but we will get there. As far as changes goes, there are 6 new additions to this list, and 2 series has an increase in their ranking. So yeah, without further ado, let's start with the number 15 spot. At the number 15 spot is the Winnowing Flame trilogy by Jen Williams. Compared to the time when I posted my list 2 years ago, there has been a lot of new readership for the Winnowing Flame trilogy, and I think it is truly well deserved. I am happy for Jen Williams. I mean, the Winnowing Flame trilogy even now has a hardcover edition, and I'm truly glad for Jen Williams and the series because this series truly deserves it. But despite that, it is still considerably underrated. I think if you love animal companionship and well-written aerial battle scenes, I think you really should take a look into the Wino in Flame trilogy. It has great characters and development and the world building is bizarre and I know that this won't click with plenty of readers, but if you're okay with a bit of a bizarre world building, I think you should take a look into the Wino in Flame trilogy. It is so good. The first book is uh, the Ninth Rain, the second book is The Bitter Twins, and the third and final book is The Poison Song. And moving on to the number 14 spot, this is a new addition to this list, and this is War for the Rose Throne Quartet by Peter McLean. The first book is Priest of Bones, and then Priest of Lies, and then Priest of Gallows, and finally Priest of Crowns. I love this series. If you love reading a main character with a superbly distinct narration, then this series is for you. I've read many fantasy series and up to this day, I can say it with utmost confidence that the narration in The War for the Rose Stone is one of the most memorable one. It is a gangster fantasy series and the first book in the series, Priest of Bones, initially started out very similar to Peaky Blinders. And yes, if you love Peaky Blinders, the TV show, I think you should give this series a try. In my opinion, this series is even better than the TV show. But fortunately, starting from the second book, Priest of Lies, starting from that and beyond, the series has certainly started to become its own thing and I highly recommend this to those of you who love gangster fantasy and also grimdark fantasy series. And speaking of grimdark fantasy, the next series on this list is Ash and Sanctuary by Richard Nell. Now, if you love a main character that reminded you of reading Logan Nine Fingers or The Bloody Nine from the first law trilogy, well, SNS trilogy will be for you because Ruka, Ruka, son of Bela, is one of the most iconic characters I've read in Grimdark Fantasy. The magic system in this trilogy is pretty unique, and also the storytelling style and the way the author juggles timeline in this trilogy is very different from so many other fantasy series out there. But once again, this series is certainly Grimdark Fantasy, and I don't think I can recommend this to you if you're not a fan of the grimdark subgenre. Personally speaking though, I really loved it. I think the first book, Kings of Paradise, was great, but the second and third book, Kings of Ash and also Kings of Heaven, were amazing in my opinion. It has one of the most satisfying ending that I've read in grimdark fantasy. Certainly give it a try. And talking about satisfying ending, the next series on this list is the Divine Cities trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. I had the difficulty in choosing whether to include uh, the Founders trilogy or the Divine Cities trilogy. I love both series by Robert Jackson Bennett very much. Robert Jackson and Bennett is one of my favorite authors. I think he's one of the few authors that can combine and mash fantasy, sci-fi, and horror seamlessly in his books. This is an element that is evident in both of his fantasy or science fantasy series. But even though I enjoyed the Founders trilogy very much, I think at the end of the day, the Divine Series trilogy left a much stronger impact on me, left a much stronger lasting impression on me. I mean, I'm still thinking about it to this day. Even though I've read the series only once, I really need to do a reread of this standalone fantasy series. It is a trilogy consisting of standalone books, connecting standalone books. All three books in the series have different main characters, and I think it is safe to say that this trilogy can be categorized as an urban high fantasy series. And that's one of my favorite subgenre to read. And yes, you don't need to worry about the series having a disappointing ending. That is not the case 
with the Divine Series Trilogy, City of Miracles, the third and final book in the trilogy, is one of my favorite books, and yes, it is an amazing conclusion to the trilogy. And the next series on this list is a series that I recently completed just last month, actually. This is The Five Warrior Angels Trilogy by Brian Lee Durfee. The first book is The Forgetting Moon, the second book is The Blacker's Heart, and then the third and final book is The Lonesome Crown. I finished reading The Lonesome Crown last month, and I think Brian Lee Durfee did such an excellent job in concluding the massive trilogy. There have been plenty of discussions and opinions throughout the years that, well, classic fantasy troops such as Chosen Ones and Prophecies make the stories predictable, and I really don't think that is the case, especially not with the five warrior angels. I will be surprised if you actually can predict where the story actually goes in this trilogy. Just when I thought I was certain about the plot progression and also the character development, I was proven wrong time and time again, and I think all of them work to the better effect of this trilogy. The Lonesome Crown, the final book in the trilogy, features one of the biggest war scenes that I've read in fantasy. I think it was about 200 pages of war scenes. Yes, it is that massive, it is gruesome, and yeah, I think I think it is safe to say that this one belongs in the grimdark subgenre category. Not only Brian Lee Durfee excels at writing battle scenes, I think more importantly, he's really good at writing unlikable characters and turn it around into making me like them. For example, Liz Han is one of the most despicable characters I've come across. In the first book, I hated this character so much, and I grew to like her more and more throughout the trilogy. And this is applied to many of the characters in the series. It is incredible, and it has one of the most memorable animal companions, Birmok. Birmok is just legendary. And now we arrive at the top 10 spot, and at the number 10 spot is The Rydia Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. The first book, or the first omnibus, is Death of Swords. The second omnibus is The Rise of Empire, and then the third and final omnibus is The Heir of Navran. This one has a huge increase in ranking because I just did a reread of the entire series uh, last year. And I did the reread after I finished catching up to the Raria Chronicles, which is the prequel series to the Raria Revelations. This makes me more invested in Royce and Hadrian as a character, even more than the first time I read through Raria Revelations, obviously. And because of that, when I reread Tap of Swords, which I rated about two stars on my first time reading through it, I was shocked by how much I end up enjoying Tap of Swords because I care so much about the characters now. I do believe that the first two books, at the very least, in the Radia Revelations will work so much better on reread after you get to know the characters first. That's exactly what happened to me. And besides Royce and Hadrian, Sullivan also wrote some of the most well-written female characters that I've come across even to this day. Arista, Modina, they are all so well-written. If you want to find a great example of a fantasy series concluding incredibly satisfying, look no further than the Radia Revelations. The ending to this one is just so satisfying satisfying that I never want Michael J. Sullivan to write a continuing series to this uh, trilogy or six book series. Never, because I think the ending is just too good already. And I'm afraid that writing a sequel series will only ruin that wonderful ending, and I do not want that happening. And the next series on this list is a new edition, and this is the Reef War Empire trilogy by Raymond E. Feist and Jenny Wirtz. This one is a bit of a surprise to me because I didn't like, I didn't like reading Reef War Saga, the first trilogy in the entire Reef War cycle. I didn't like reading that series by Raymond E. Feist. But Rift War Empire Trilogy is a different story, starting from the first book, Daughter of the Empire, and then the second book, Servant of the Empire, and finally, the third and final book, uh, Mistress of the Empire. All three books, in my opinion, just excels by far above Rift War Saga. And I think the person responsible for this, as Raymond E. Feist himself stated, is Jenny Wirtz. I think the collaboration with her did a huge service to the Rift War Empire trilogy. Mara is one of the best heroines I've read in fantasy, and the political maneuvering in this trilogy is one of the most devastating and intense that I've read. It is done so good. Everything about this trilogy is just so good, in my opinion. It is even more surprising to me because the first book in the series was first published before I was even born. And usually, I don't click really well with fantasy that were published before the year 1990. But that is certainly not the case with the Rift War Empire trilogy. I think Raymond E. Feist's collaboration with Jenny Wirtz transformed this series into something truly incredible, and I think many people should give this series a try. And moving on to the number 8 spot, it is the Lycanius trilogy by James Eilington. The first 
first book is The Shadow of What Was Lost, the second book is An Echo of Things to Come, and then the third and final book is The Light of All That Falls. And I love this trilogy. It is most likely one of the most talked about trilogy on my channel because I love this trilogy and somehow I don't see many booktubers, especially booktubers, loving the like hideous trilogy. And I know that this trilogy has often been advertised as being, if you love The Wheel of Time, you will love the Lycanius trilogy. And as it turns out, the opposite effect actually happens. Usually those who love the Wheel of Time end up disliking the Lycanius trilogy. And I think it is a bit of a shame because I think James Eilington did such an incredible job in writing this trilogy. He compressed so many world building and lore into this entire trilogy. Even though the first book, The Shadow of What Was Lost, is very accessible to newcomers to the fantasy genre, the second and the third book are definitely not. They are so complex and I don't think it is a good idea to read this trilogy without doing a binge read of the three of them. This is one of those series where I will always highly encourage readers to binge read them or read them close to each other. There are so many crucial elements in the narrative to remember and even though there are detailed summaries at the beginning of each book, I don't think that were enough to refresh readers' memory. It is truly complex and it has a magnificent ending to the trilogy. Also, Caden is one of my favorite characters in fantasy. If there is one thing that Eilington did right with this trilogy, it is the characterizations and character development for Caden. Eilington mentioned that he wrote the Lycanius trilogy after he finished reading The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss and also Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, and I can certainly see the influence in his writing and his storytelling structure, especially in the way everything came together in the final book of the trilogy, just like Miss Bond Trilogy. And speaking of Miss Bond Trilogy, the next series on this list is Miss Bond Series or Miss Bond Saga by Brandon Sanderson. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, if you're familiar with my reviews, then you will know that Miss Bond is the most important series for me. It sparked my love for reading fantasy novels. Yes, it is not the best series that I've read. I mean, there are six other series on top of this, just on this list alone. But nothing will change the fact that this is the most important fantasy series for me. And I personally think that Allomancy is still my favorite magic system that I've read in fantasy. It is just so well realized. The characters in the first trilogy are so memorable. And now that I have finished reading Mistborn Era 2, it was so great to see the development. It was so great to see Sanderson Vision in developing Allomancy as a magic system. And to think there are still two eras coming for the Mistborn saga, it makes me super excited for the future of this series. But yeah, at the number seven spot, my vote goes to the Mistborn trilogy or the Mistborn saga. We only have six series on this list and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I consider the next six fantasy series as my number one spot. I know you might call this cheating but I just cannot choose. Depending on my reading mood, I could just end up choosing one over the other. But I am filled with confidence in saying that these six series are the best completed fantasy series I've read as of 2022. And the first of six on the list goes to The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. The 16th book series in The Realm of the Elderlings is one of my top favorite series of all time. The Realm of the Elderlings consists of five sub-series and they are all very much connected with one another in my opinion. The first one is Farsi Trilogy, and then Life Ship Traders Trilogy, Pony Man Trilogy, Rain Wild Chronicles, and finally The Fits and the Fool Trilogy. The Fits and the Fool in particular is my favorite trilogy out of the five sub-series. Robin Hobb has one of the best pros in fantasy. In the entire fantasy genre, I think she has one of the best pros. Robin Hobb's books doesn't feature a lot of battle scenes, and if you're someone, if you're a fantasy reader who are looking to finding a great fantasy series with a lot of battle scenes, well, The Realm of the Otherlings is not for you. What Robin Hobb excels in, however, is her characters. The characterizations is just unforgettable. Fits, Fool, Night Eyes, and the characters of the Life Ship Traders, they are all some of the most well-realized characters in the entire fantasy genre. It has been two years since I first posted my completed fantasy series video, and ever since then, I still see many people diving into the realm of the Elderlings for the first time and enjoying the hell out of it. And I'm not surprised by this. If you're one of them who haven't dived into the realm of the Elderlings, I highly recommend you to do it. It is one of my and many other readers' top favorite fantasy series, and Robin Hobb deserves every praise she gets and more. And the second out of six favorite series goes to Malazan Book of the Followed by Steven Erickson. This is a 10 books massive fantasy series and it's still the most epic fantasy series that I've read up to this day. It is just so epic in scope. The world building is second to none and it is complex. 
I get it. It is a complex series and it is difficult. It is relatively more difficult than so many other fantasy series out there. Every character you meet has their own story and background and every setting has their own history. But I personally don't think Steven Erickson made this series difficult just for the sake of making it difficult. There are reward. Malazan Book of the Fallen, almost every book in the series has one of the most rewarding ending that I've read in fantasy. Like Death House Gates, Memories of Ice, The Bone Hunters, All the Hounds, and also finally Crippled God. Five of these in particular have some of the most rewarding ending I've read. Seriously, it is just so good. The series features more than thousands of characters, multiple landscapes and cities, extensively intricate world building, and epic war scenes. If you're into those, then definitely give Malazan Book of the Fallen a try. Probably not if you're someone new into the fantasy genre, but if you have read plenty of other epic fantasy, I think you should try reading. Malazan Book of the Fallen. And moving on to the next one, the third out of six favorite series is The First Law World by Joe Abercrombie, consisting of the First Law Trilogy, The Great Leveler Trilogy or the Standalone Trilogy, and finally The Age of Madness Trilogy. I think the entire First Law World is my favorite grimdark fantasy series of all time. At the number one spot, Joe Abercrombie's characterizations is unmatched in grimdark fantasy. I think he's the best writer when it comes to characterizations in the grimdark subgenre. Just the best, really. I absolutely love reading Abercrombie's prose. He is one of the few authors that can actually include laugh out loud moments in grimdark fantasy and they're genuinely humorous and hilarious. I have talked about the first law series on my channel so many times and I will continue to do that. If the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson sparked my love for reading fantasy novels, well the first law trilogy sparked my love for reading grimdark fantasy novels. Just for a bit of context here, before I started reading fantasy novels, I only read manga. But again, back to the point, I think Joe Abercrombie also writes some of the best lines in grimdark fantasy. Better to do it than live with the fear of it is still one of my motto to this day. I use that to pretty much drive myself to do many things, one of them being starting my own channel. Abercrombie also crafted some of the most iconic characters such as Logan Nine Fingers or the Bloody Nine, a Sandan Glokta, Carl Shivers, Dogman, and so many more so many characters throughout the first law world that I will consider as some of the best characters I've come across. And in my opinion, Joe Abercrombie is one of the two best close quarter combat scenes writer in the entire fantasy genre. The way Abercrombie juggles and utilizes his POV chapters during his battle scenes made me feel like I was watching a vivid cinematic warfare in motion. The other one is the next series on the list. And the next series on this list is indeed the Banished Land Saga by John Gwynn, consisting of the Faithful and the Fallen Quartet and also of Blood and Bone trilogy. John Gwynn has an increase in popularity since I posted my video two years ago, and this is most likely due to the release of the Blood Swan Saga, the new Norse-inspired epic fantasy trilogy by John Gwynn. And that's another great series for you to dive into, but personally, I love the Faithful and the Fallen and of Blood and Bone trilogy more than the Blood Swan Saga, mainly because I do believe that the Faithful and the Fallen, the characters in the Faithful and the Fallen, has more heart in them. That's in my opinion anyway. But that's really the thing that makes the Faithful and the Fallen so special to me. Corbin, Gar, Makin, Storm, and many other characters in the series, they all have become real friends to me. And the antagonists are so despicable, the protagonists are so likable. And as I said earlier, I think John Gwynn is one of the best combat scenes writer, close quarter combat scenes writer that doesn't involve high fantasy magic. Just like, for example, Joe Abercrombie, their battle scenes doesn't involve a lot of magic. I have a different category for best writer when it comes to close quarter combat with magic being used. But for non-magical combat scenes writer, I think Joe Abercrombie and also John Gwynn are at the top. The Banished Land Saga are epic in its scope and John Gwynn is very merciless to his characters. After making us care toward his characters, he's not afraid to kill off many of his characters and I think that ramps up the tension of his story and narrative incredibly well. I love the Banished Land Saga so much and if you have found John Gwynn through reading the Bloodsworn Saga, please please give the Banished Land Saga a try. You're missing out on something truly incredible by not reading the Banished Land Saga. We only have two more series on this list and the next one is the Dandelion Lion Dynasty by Ken Liu. I just finished reading through this quartet uh, last year 
and I'm just head over heels with this quartet. I think Ken Liu became one of my favorite authors immediately through this quartet. I have talked about how much I love this series many times on my channel, especially uh, last year. And I think many of you who have been watching and following my reviews since last year will know how much I love the Dandelion Dynasty by now. And yeah, I truly cherish this quartet. All books in the series, The Grace of Kings, The Wall of Storms, my favorite book of last year, by the way, uh, and then the Veil Throne and finally Speaking Boons, all of them are included in my list of favorite books. I have never highlighted passages as much as I did for the Dandelion Dynasty, especially in Speaking Boons, the last book in the series. I think I highlighted more than 100 passages. That never happened, never happened before. But I truly believe Ken Liu has one of the best, maybe even the best prose in the fantasy genre, depending on my reading mood, of course. But I just love reading his writing. The series just felt so intellectual and accessible, and it is unique. It is different from so many other series out there. But on top of the intellectual themes, philosophies, and everything discussed, at the end of the day, what makes this series so much more incredible is, as always, the characters the characters and the characterizations and development. Due to how invested I was with the characters, I can feel the tension popping up the pages of the books. And believe me, Ken Liu is one of those merciless authors. He's merciless toward his characters. So many brutal and ruthless things happen to them and I have to applaud him for it. I think it really increased the stakes and the tension of the plot and conflict of the series so much. Ken Liu also wrote some of the best female characters I've come across in the entire fantasy genre, such as Gin Mazot, and many more. I love the Dandelion Dynasty so much and I think it is still quite underhyped and underrated outside of booktube. Please give this series a try. Please give this series a read. It is truly one of the best quartet of fantasy series out there. And finally, the last series on this list, the six out of six series sharing the number one spot is The Green Bone Saga by Fondali. I mean, there is no way I'm not mentioning this trilogy, right? The Green Bone Saga is the best trilogy that I've read. Yes, it is the best trilogy that I've read to this day. Consisting of Jade City, Jade War, and finally Jade Legacy, this is just the finest trilogy out there in my opinion. The Green Bone Saga is an urban high fantasy series with a well-realized world building and extremely well-written characters. The Cowl family, the entire Cowl family, has become real people to me. After reading through the Green Bone Saga trilogy, it really feels like I have gotten to know each and every one of them as a real person. I know their personality, I know their actions, I know their motivations. The characterizations in this trilogy is just so masterful, especially for Cowl Hilo, one of my favorite characters in the entire fantasy genre. Fondali is also one of the best combat scenes writer with magic involved. The magic system in this trilogy was beautifully implemented, and although the action scenes throughout this trilogy, the duel scenes or the big battle scenes are also impactful and memorable, I have to give my praises to Fondali even more for writing superbly intense dialogues. The dialogues in this trilogy, I'm telling you, they are even more intense than many other battle scenes in other fantasy series that I've read. I think that's one of the signs of how great you are as a storyteller when you are capable of making dialogues felt so emotional and impactful and intense. As I said, even more intense than many other battle scenes I've read. And I think it's all due to, again, a masterful characterizations of the characters in the Green Bone Saga. The scope of the trilogy is also epic in its own way as it involves multiple generations in a family. It is truly an unforgettable trilogy for me and I know I will reread this series many times in the future. I absolutely love the Green Bone Saga and yes, again, this is the best trilogy that I've read. So yeah, that's the end of today's video. That's my updated top 15 completed fantasy series as of 2022. And once again, the top six on the list shared the number one spot. Just consider them as the best of the best completed fantasy series that I've read. I just cannot choose, okay, between the six of them. I will update this list again at the end of 2024 or at the beginning of the year 2025. And for those of you who ask me about my favorite ongoing series list, I will update that at the end of this year. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. Do let me know your thoughts on the list I chose and please let me know what are your favorite completed fantasy series. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.